What's happening, fellas? It's Saturday morning here. We're at the New England Motorcycle Museum. My good friend John Farrell just came down all the way from Maine. And today, I feel the need for speed. Flashback in the time capsule to 1984. John Farrell, how old were you, John? 23 years old. How old are you now, John? <laughs> Don't even want to say. <laughs> 20, 60. <laughs> 23, 23 years old. And uh, you walked into the Kawasaki dealer and bought the world's fastest production motorcycle before Tom Cruise even swung a leg over it in the movie Top Gun and made it famous. You bought the 151 mile per hour, world's first production, four cylinder, liquid cooled, four valve per cylinder, Kawasaki Ninja, which started a generation, 20 years they made the, the Ninja 900. So what, what inspired you to do that, John? Like you said, I felt the need for speed. <laughs> 23 years old and no fears in the world. So, you know how it feels. And you actually bought a second one. So you have twin GPZ 900s that we're buying from you today. And it has the license plate GPZ 900, which is pretty cool. I see this one, you put a Vance and Heinz pipe and did some mods on it and you had it up to, what was your top speed on it? I think I saw 156. What's it like doing 156 miles an hour? You're watching the telephone poles go by like picket fences. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. That's you don't awesome. want to lift your head out behind that goddamn windscreen either. Because yeah. when you do, it's like putting the brake on. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So how many miles did you put on her? Well, uh, this one here has got 37 original thousand miles, thousand miles that I originally put on it. And I bought that one with... 12,000 and it's got 25,000 so there's another 13,000 on that so th this one here they're, they're both the same bikes this one has a little bit less miles i see you just put some brand new metzler tires on it and redid the brakes and everything else um you haven't been riding them that much uh, recently though due to some issues right yeah I've just, my legs can't take it anymore i get off this thing and my knee just throbs so time for someone else to enjoy them well john you know um we restore bikes here at the museum and this bike right here in honor of your 37 year commitment to it we're going to give this one the full monty we're gonna have the manic mechanic who happens to be a specialist on these bikes jeff castine go through them rebuild them dyno tune them whatever it takes so stay tuned we're gonna have a video of her all done up and we'll absolutely have to do a top gun spoof you know i already I talked to christy about it ride this thing again. hell yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah well it probably take us a couple months to get her done but um it's going right at the, to the top of the list here this one here um needs a little less work this one's actually ready to ride so we'll have a video of this one coming up pretty soon tell us a little bit about this one here now you bought that one brand new and was it your big brother or little brother that bought the brother of course, the younger brother had to get the smaller one. This is a beautiful Kawasaki GPZ 750, excuse me. Your brother bought this brand new? He bought that one brand new in 1983. 1983? Yep. Same Kawasaki dealer? Same Kawasaki dealer. Portland Yamaha Kawasaki in Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine Kawasaki Yamaha. So um, what was the history behind this? He only put 8,000 miles on it. He didn't ride it much, huh? You know, he put like 8,000 miles on it, and I think he was scared of it. He had kids, and I don't think his wife wanted him to ride it anymore. It sat around, sat around, sat around. Finally, I bought it for my son. My son didn't express a lot of interest in it, so I was going to ride it, but just never really got around to fixing it. It's hard back at home to find someone that wants to work on these old bikes. Yeah, a lot of the Cowie dealers won't even work on the classics. Um, no. we're, we're fortunate here to have a team of guys that specialize in vintage bikes. So I look at this and I'm like a piece of cake. We'll do the carb clean, put the original exhaust back on it, uh, redo the gaskets, take the top end off, clean everything up. That should be uh, ready to go at 8,000 miles on it, you know? Yeah, she's a beaut too. And that, that, that one's 100% bone stock, right? Right. Everything except for the spark plug wires. Yep, nothing's been done to it. I'm sure I can get the OEM originals, and, and you actually have the stock exhaust to your 900 in here, too. That's the stock exhaust for the 900 right there, and that's the exhaust, original exhaust system for the 550 there. So we'll put them back to stock. I mean, they're 37, they're almost 40 years old. They're classics. They're worth, in my opinion, um, the closer to original you can get them, the better off you are. Even if even the original paint, if it's got a little scratch on it or whatever, I wouldn't repaint it. Just keep them original because they're only original ones. Clean, yeah, this you know, this paint job is, is just beautiful. Come on. This one this one's really, really nice. Yeah. So your brother definitely well he didn't ride it. I mean eight thousand miles. I mean most guys put that much on in a year. Around, sat around, sat around. 
carbs uh, so um, carb clean and she should be good to go yep. these were great track bikes uh, a few of the guys that work here um, Mark Olson specifically uh, he was a road racer and he road raced these up at Loudon I think Billy Blythe did too but uh, it's this is an excellent track bike too uh, I, I guess now it would qualify for AH MRA antique uh, racing because it's a classic but this is a bike you could take to the banks of Daytona as well as the Ninja. Now, the Ninja, when Kawasaki came out with this bike in 1984, they actually had a privateer effort that went to the Isle of Man the first year this bike existed. And they put, the team had three Ninja 900s. One of them went down. The other two went one, two on the podium, first and second. This was the bike that set the standard um, at the Isle of Man, which is really the proven grounds for, for, uh, for, for any motorcycle. John, um, I know it's a, a bittersweet day for you letting these go here, but uh, uh, I'm sure you're happy to see that they're going to a place where they're going to be resurrected and, and, and given a second chance, right? Exactly right. I, I, I honestly don't want to get rid of them. I wish I was keeping them. But. What, what inspired you to have a, a, us, us do them? Because uh, you could have sold them to anybody, I'm sure. What inspired now, you to bring them here? You know, like I said, I'd rather see them go to somebody that I know is not a 20 year old kid that's gonna crash it, not gonna appreciate it. And I might be able, be able to possibly come back down here and take it for a ride. When it's we'll done, when it's that. done, I'll post the video up and, and please come down. Oh. Um, we'll, we'll slap your, your plate back on there uh, with a dealer plate in your pocket too, so it's legal. <laughs> and we'll do a video of you riding your bike restored 37 years later. That sounds great. Stay tuned guys, there will be a series of videos of these. We're gonna have some fun. Uh, we're gonna do a little Top Gun spoof like we have in the past. Christy already agreed to do that, so I feel the need for speed. Saturday morning, the New England Motorcycle Museum. Got the uh, visitors here lined up on their bikes. The parking lot's full out front. It's going to be a great day. Thanks for watching, and God bless America. And God bless you, John, for hooking us up with these bikes and, and maintaining them, keeping them safe for 37 years. Stay tuned.